Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I want to cover another VFD power cable. Now this is, again, a power cable that is going to another client. Um, this cable is unique because, again, we're using a NEMA plug, and this is an L630P from Leviton. Very, very nice connector. Um, I get a lot of questions on these plugs, and I want you guys to pay close attention. Right here is the box for the plug, and one of the biggest questions I always get asked, is there a wiring diagram for the plug? And if you look closely on this box, right here as I'm pointing, there's a Y, an X, and a G. The G symbolizes for ground. The Y and X are for power. Okay, now this is a two-pole, three-wire grounding plug, and when you're wiring this individual unit for power, First thing you're going to find is there is no access to solder. I get a lot of questions on this. If you're dealing with a plug like this, you can see it's actually uh, surrounded by a plexiglass kind of plastic. It comes all the way around the unit, and again, it is, of course, heat treated. And you can see here on this particular cable, the red lead is the ground. And the red lead, again, it's an arbitrary uh, color as far as what lead we actually decide to use for ground. However, you can see how I identified it on the opposite end. Again, this is inside the connector. You can see the ground terminal right here. Again, it is the one with the green on it. But you also see that secondary lead coming in, and that is our shield drain. Okay? And you can see why I prefer to use silicone leads. You can see how it comes in, comes over, and of course, it is soldered to this actual lead right here. Okay? All of these leads have soldered actual tinned ends, and that's so that, once again, when you insert them inside these terminals, you know that once you cinch it down, it's going to be properly done. You can also see the insulator used on the ground drain, as you should be using, to once again protect, God forbid, if any of these ever deteriorated, you would never want a dead short, and that always absolutely isolates that. Now, one of the biggest things I get asked about finishing is how do you get leads in different kinds of shapes? Now, of course, silicone is easy to mold, but what I, I typically do, and this is a secret that works really, really well, you want to use, whether you're using a precision heat gun like this, which again is on my 995D+, Plus, what I always do is I will heat these leads, and if you warm PVC, it will allow it to become moldable. Okay, it becomes very soft. Okay, heat is your friend. The thing is, you don't want to use too much heat. So again, you got to play with it a little bit. Once you play with it, you can basically mold those leads exactly where you want. Now, the finishing of this cable is done very simple. I'm going to come up here with double wall heat shrink with adhesive. Now, why do we want adhesive, guys? Well, let's think about this. Adhesive is used to lock this heat shrink in place. Now, I don't want to come all the way up here and cinch this all the way down. A lot of guys do that, and all you're doing is putting excess stress on your leads itself. What you want to do is stay beneath the wire where it actually ends and come back here and put the heat and make what's known as a boot. And the main reason we do that is so that this stays nice and wide up here where it fans out to our leads. It's not going to put excess stress there. And then by the time it actually joins to the cable, you're actually formulating and encasing this cable with that double wall heat shrink, which will become plastic. And the main reason we want to do that is when we bring the butt cap end up, we make sure that our stress relief is now been created this way. So it'll make contact with the double wall heat shrink and this way you know you're not going to chafe any of your cable's PVC casing. So again, looking at this and seeing how this is done, I wanted you guys to see it internally before I close her up, but you could see a lot of guys always say to me, you know, Vin, it's like you're doing surgery, and it is. It's very much the same as what you'd see with surgery to do this right. You can see there's no external casing as far as tin braided copper or foil shield actually protruding, okay? And the reason that is, is because I'm using two tools. Many of you guys are going to be familiar with these. These are Nipix. If you're not familiar, these are the best. These are made in Germany. And these right here are my flush cutters, and that's how we get these leads, and we get all of that tin braided copper, and we get the aluminum foil and everything sound, okay? You need the tools to do the job correctly. Once again, these flush cutters will work just as well. The Nipix just, uh, in my case, I had to purchase for certain cables that I work with. I needed more angle on my tips. But believe it or not, they both work exceptionally well. The big difference here is how you assemble. And again, you can see how clean this is. Also, just to point out, and I've said this in previous videos, you may see a little moisture inside there. And that moisture 
is because every cable I build, I, I coat with deoxin. Okay, and this little vial, this vial, you can see my big meaty thumb, this vial right here is 1.6 milliliters. This goes for about $15 because this chemical right here enhances all conductivity and it does not allow formulation of any type of uh, corrosion. You will not get any corrosion. It actually drops your resistance. Let me say it that way. It's the easiest way to explain it. It's a contact enhancer. And this stuff is amazing, okay? I sell it in my store, I become a dealer of it because it works exceptionally well. Um, again, anybody who I build a cable for, I always use this, so once again, your cables and conductors are always protected. But now you can def definitively see how we work with these connectors. And what makes this connector also very unique is it's a screw and lock in place. You can see the ground here, how that terminal's got like a, almost like a, a lip to it, and that lip, goes in and locks so that this connector will not move. So once again, you can see how one of these is built. Again, your measuring is very, very, uh, needs to be done very carefully because if you overcut the cable, you'll find that you will not have enough meat on the actual cable for your stress relief. You do not want to cut this too far back. You cut, measure actually three times. I usually measure at least three times. In this case, I was thankful that I actually have uh, templates for most cables and then I'm set to go. In which case, you can see here, this is done with uh, a straight edge razor blade, and that's how we get that edge. And you can see exactly how this is done. And hopefully, it will answer many of your questions, because I get asked a lot about different connectors. This is one of the nicest I've seen. Uh, and this is going to my client, Mike. Uh, again, he's in New York, and this is just one of those cables that I think once you guys see it done, and you can see how intricate it is, because I get asked all the time, why does it cost so much? Try doing the soldering and do all of this, and you can see exactly what you're working with. The other thing is, on the opposite end of this cable, where it connects to your VFD, and I want to point this out as well, you can see what I did here. He's got the two leads, and then these are already templated to fit the VFD in exact position of where it's going to plug into the VFD. You can see how the red lead comes all the way over, with our shield drain, and you can see, and I just got this in stock and I love it, it's the uh, yellow with green stripe heat shrink, which indicates ground, which is very nice to use, and this does have adhesive on it. And what I did is I used the adhesive to lock this connector in place, so that when he goes to plug this in, it literally just falls right into place. And you can see the deoxid on these connectors. You can see that right there. It's got a very sh slight yellow tint to it. And that's how you know they've been protected. But the beauty of this is there's the boot. And that's the same formulation I'm talking about. Guys ask me all the time, why, why isn't it shrunk all the way up? Why would you want to put excess stress on your leads? It doesn't make sense. All you want to do is make this a solid piece. And then as it comes up here, it fans out. So these leads have no stress on them. Then when he goes to plug this in, it just falls into place. That's why this red lead comes all the way over because again, it's indicating ground. And the ground lead on your VFD, if any, many, of, many of you already know, is all the way on the far right side, terminal nine. Then your R and S pins for power are on your far left side. So as he plugs this in, it all calibrates and everything corroborates and makes sense. So you can see exactly what was done here. This new heat shrink, I love, very hard to find. Uh, I actually had it made and I love it. It's just amazing. It's simple now to identify ground. If you guys are building your own assemblies, I cannot emphasize that enough. Now, something else I want to point out. We talk about details. I use Flitz polish on every conductor prior to applying the oxy. Many of you don't even realize that. These are polished. And the reason I do that is so we make sure that these conductors are protected. Okay, I want them clean any type of film on them. I want that all totally removed before I actually apply the oxid. So you go look up how much Flitz polish is. Very, very old school polish, works excellent. And this is applied to these conductors prior. You can see the reflection on them. And then we go over it with the oxid to seal them. That's on every cable I build. But I get asked a lot about, you know, how do your conductors, you know, what do you put on your conductors? What do you use? Something else I use. Loctite. You see, that's the real deal, guys. That's 243. It's a blue medium strength. I use that on all my screws. This way you're good. Now, of course, on a plastic con uh, connector where it's going into plastic, I cannot use this. On metal conductors, or excuse me, metal connectors where I'm going into spindle cable type ends where we're dealing with the actual plug in, this I will apply to all the screws. Okay, and again, we're dealing with vibration, so it's a must. 
have to do that. So again, if you factor in just buying these chemicals and all the other additives that I use, you'll find out real quick what the cost is. You know, I'm using only a little bit, but you still got to have these in stock. And you should be using them uh, liberally throughout the build of your system, depending upon what cables you're working with. Okay? So again, I hope that this has been a helpful video. You can see here how the boot is. It's totally symmetrical. And everything here is nice and clean. And those leads are all set. So this will be done. I'm going to close her up. And again, guys, if you have any questions, require quotes, consultations, message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. That is my direct email address. Or you can message me through my e-dealer store. Um, I plan on doing more videos like this because I know I get questions on these type of connectors all the time and really discussing VFD power cables. We really don't discuss it that much, but it's another one of those really critical cables that has to be built properly. And again, guys, just to clarify, this is a double shielded cable. This is a double shielded cable, okay? I'm not using single shielded. This is double shielded even to run power to the unit. So we mitigate the most EMI possible for bulletproof signal protection, okay? And we're doing that not to protect so much the power input to the VFD as we are, we don't want extraneous EMI to be just spewing all over the place. This is proper, uh, this is best practice for this application, okay? So again, guys, to all my subscribers, love you guys. I hope the video has been helpful. Thank you all for your support. Take care.